Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Wendy, I'm an ophthalmologist based in Kuching and the mother of three. So as promised this week, we're going to be talking about exams, more specifically pre-examination in master. This is something that is like you're interested to know or if you're a junior doctor who is already in the master program or if you're still in your housemanship and you have a lot, a lot of interest in ophthalmology, definitely subscribe so that you don't miss out any of this episode because in the subsequent episode, I will be talking about all the exams that you're going to take in your master program and what are the syllabus and the scopes that you have to look out for. Also, I will try to insert some tips here and there, here and there on how to score higher in your examinations. So later on in this video, I'll be explaining to you what exactly is negative marking. You have not heard what is negative marking. Ah, and it's something that is quite uh, normal in the locals Malaysian. But for me, uh, I graduated from Moscow. I've never heard of this. I don't know how this works. So this is something very, very new to me. And if you're an overseas student, this may be the first time that you are hearing this negative marking system also. So, so if this is something that is up your sleep and it's something that you're interested to know, shall we just take a moment to appreciate this? Beautiful. One eternity later. For this week, we will be talking about the exams that you have to take before you join the master program, which is the MEDEX. So what does MEDEX stands for? MEDEX stands for pre-master. Entrance exam for master program, medical specialist pre-entrance examination, or peperiksaan pra kemasukan ijazah perubatan. Essentially, it's actually an entrance exam to any specialty training lah. It is established by the medical dean council and is conducted by Majlis Peperiksaan Malaysia or the Malaysia Examination Council. Hence, they have the authority to conduct master examination here in Malaysia. Because previously all university they are like doing their own entrance exam some specialty got some specialty don't have some universities got some universities don't have so this is actually a more more uniform way more transparent also i would say to conduct this pre-exam examination So anyone in medicine who wish to join the master of specialist training should take this uh, medex examination So this is actually one of the criteria in most of the uh, master program application that you have to pass this medical examination first before you are considered allowed to join any master application. In ophthalmology, we have we used to have our own basic science examination, which is essentially also our medex examination. So last time in my time, I never heard of this medex. Uh, it was we we call it basic science examination BSE, and essentially it's about the same thing. This year BSE has actually been postponed or cancelled. I think cancelled due to the COVID COVID pandemic, and so everyone is encouraged to join this medex examination. And uh, medex examination is now the uh, pre master entrance exam for master of ophthalmology as well. You can take it anytime you want, but one of the requirements before you can take this exam is that you have to complete your housemanship first. So when you're a junior doctor or a medical officer, watch this video on what to prepare and then study and then go take this exam. Don't procrastinate anymore, just go take it. It, it is uh, held twice a year, usually in June and November. But again, during this COVID pandemic, sometimes the schedule may change. So I really recommend you to check their formal website for more information. No free lunch in this world forever and ever. Come on. So you need to pay 800 ringgit. Last time I paid 500, I think. Inflation. You are a working earning adult, so you can pay for all this examination. Uh. Can lah. It is actually more accessible to everybody because last time during my time BSE, I have to fly to KL because there's only one place in KL that uh, uh, hosts and organizes this BSE examination. Because these are all unified, uh, so there is more and more universities that held this MEDEX examination and there are multiple examination centers throughout the Malaysia. So people for like us like in Sabah and Sarawak, we don't have to fly to KL already to uh, take this examination. You can actually take it in Unimas as well. So imagine all the uh, flight tickets that you're saving, the taxi or the grab that you're saving and also the hotels that you're saving. So it's actually, okay like 800, just pay only like, just go take the exam. Uh, you can sit this exam as many times as you want. One, just pay the 800 and you go sit many times. As many times as you want. 
uh, in order for you to get higher grades, you can, some people choose to take multiple times so that maybe they get D, so they're hoping for a C, then from C they get a B. Why is this important? I've explained it in my previous video because uh, having a past grade will definitely add credibility to your master application. So it's actually good to get higher marks. But if you take, if you have taken like maybe four times because you know you want to take so many times, the best result is the one that is being considered for your master application. So don't, so don't worry, you can try as many times as you want. So this examination is graded by A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? A, B, C, D is pass, E and F is fail. So if you fail the first time, you can take a second time. The better, the better lah. The result is valid for three years, so don't worry about it. Personal medical officer still in my district posting, hate my district posting. My district posting has also increased credibility in master program. So watch my video to understand more. So anyways, if I'm a first year medical student now, it's 2021. So I take this uh, medex examination and I pass with the D, maybe let's say. So this D is valid until three, for 3 years, so 2024. So if within 2021 and 2024, I still haven't got into master and I want to try again to get higher marks so that I have a better chance to get accepted into this master, master program, I can try again because it's held twice a year. So go and try, maybe who knows, maybe I study, study more, I get B. Last time, BSE, the result is also valid for 3 years. So if you take basic science previously, yes, uh, if it is still within the validity period of 3 years, yes, it is still accepted as the pre-entrance exam to Master of Pharmacology as I have heard. But another example, let's say I'm a third year medical officer already and I have taken my basic science in 2019, okay? And I have a pass in that 2019, So, but I haven't got the chance or I didn't want to start my master program first because I wanted to build my family first, let's say like example, yeah, like. okay? So, but now 2021, I want to join the master program. That result is still valid till now, even though I take it in 2019. So 2021, I can still use that examination. So this is something that uh, you need to know. Like. Soon, this uh, basic science examination is going to be replaced by MEDEX soon, as I have heard. So, um, if you still have a basic science result that is still valid, quickly, quickly go and join the master program. How to get into master program faster to rank higher than other people? Watch my other video first. Soon, MEDEX is going to be the only uh, pre-entrance exam in Malaysia. So, that is something for you to take note of as well. So now to the more juicy part, to the exam structure. It is always, always good to over-prepare yourself. Why not? Right. You want to pass the exam, you have to know how is the exam going to be held and how is the scheme and the structure of the exam. There's only one multiple choice question, MCQ. One MCQ that you have to pass, 60 questions. There are multiple true and false questions and answers like over two hours. So there are 60 questions. Each question, there are five branches, five chabang. Each answer, it can be a true or a false. So you have 50-50 chance of getting it right at each chabang of the answer. It means every A, B, C, D, E carries a point, right? So 60 times 50, so you have actually have you have a total of 300 questions that you need to answer within two hours. And there will be negative marking, negative marking for the MCQ. The notorious negative marking in MCQ applies to your MCQ when you are in master program. So I think that it is good for you to understand it now even before you join the master program. Uh, I believe even if in other master program, they all also uh, apply this negative marking scheme system. For the juicy juicy part, what is negative marking? Before I talk about negative marking, you should understand what is conventional marking. Conventional marking is the one that we all know. If all your answers are right, all five rights, you will get five marks. And if you have only four rights, then you will get four marks. And if you get three rights, then you get three marks marks and so on and so forth so basically conventional marking as we all know it is based on the number that we get correct correct or not irrespectful of the wrong answers we do not care how many wrongs that we get however negative markings is a little bit more confusing so okay if you have all five correct so obviously you will get five marks however if you get four rights and one wrong so you will get three marks huh? you must be thinking why is that so right because negative marking takes into account the wrong answer as well each wrong answer that you get it is minus from the total of correct answer so let's go back to this example really in the conventional marking you will get four marks but because you have one wrong therefore you have to minus your four total correct marks minus one and then this is why you get three marks only ah so why so this is why you cannot simply simply come and you don't know the correct answer now because anything that you get wrong will be negative mark next example this one you get three rights and two wrongs so meaning three minus two you actually get one marks 
as opposed to the conventional marking where you will probably get three marks for this question. So if you get two wrongs, you will get one mark only. Mm -hmm. The negative marking marks is not brought forward to the following question. So let's say for this example, you get three wrongs and two rights only. Two minus three, not three minus two. Huh? Two minus three, you get minus one. Three, you will get zero. So it's not the lowest mark that you can get in one question is zero. This minus one will not be brought forward to the next question. So yes. The tips to master this negative marking is yes, do not simply tick up. If you do not know the answer, don't simply guess because every incorrect answer will be deducted from the correct point so you must know when is enough uh, when to stop the coming and all these i will explain more in details and i will share my own tips in the next following videos which i'm not sure when it is coming out so you better subscribe if you really really want to know the tips and trick to mastering this negative marking uh, you are welcome in advance do not want to miss any future uploads regarding this master series you are more than welcome to subscribe because it will really help my channel to grow so if you subscribe, I thank you in advance. So this is the website that I got la, for the, uh, this is the formal website, Medical Specialist Pre-Entrance Examination in Ophthalmology. So yep, I will link it down below. Generally, you need to be really confident in your anatomy and physiology because they each carry 15% of the total mark. Okay, pathology, 10 immunology, 5 microbiology, 5 and pharmacology, 6 and genetic 6. So generally, this scope is just for reference. You can be asked based on the relevancy of the topic related to ophthalmology. I is here, so basically they'll ask mainly about head and neck and some spine cranial nerves definitely you need to know the ENT is our friend anatomy of ENT you need to know and dental is our friend those are related to ocular eye you will need to know I also forget all this anatomy but it's always good to know roughly where so that you know when people talk on you also not like huh what are you talking about you have to know the adjacent anatomy adjacent to the ocular structure and uh, other condition that is not specifically mentioned in this syllabus of course you may be asked so this is just a reference only however you won't be asked on anatomy physiology and any question pertaining to the eye itself because that you will learn in depth when you are in the master program of ophthalmology uh no it is a requirement to apply for master of ophthalmology if you pass well then you have a chance to be considered but if you fail then you have no chance lah so this is just part of the requirement it doesn't mean that you have a guaranteed place in the master program So all interested candidates, I really urge you all to take either this basic sign or this medex examination. It has the validity of three years. So once you finish your housemanship, quickly go and take this. It's only 800 ringgit. You can try as many times as you want. And that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this valuable to you. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Master this negative marking system. So, okay, because that is your confirmed correct tree. Okay, sometimes in that one question, we only do two. That is when trouble comes. If you think come two and this two is wrong, you will get zero. Go, I will come back to it. Time management. 